In this video, we'll explore the tragic events that unfolded in 2019, revolving around Jassy Correa's 23rd birthday celebration in Boston. Jassy had plans to mark the occasion at one of the city's entertainment venues, but unfortunately, she never returned home after meeting friends that night. The disappearance of Jassy Correa gripped the attention of numerous American TV channels, highlighting the urgency and concern surrounding her whereabouts. Jassy Gel Sapiris Correa was originally from Praia, the capital and largest city of Cabo Verde. At the age of three, her father immigrated to the United States with her, settling in Dorchester, Massachusetts. Boston became Jassy's home, where she spent her formative years, attended school, and eventually became a devoted mother to her daughter Gabriella. However, Jassy's personal life was far from a fairy tale. Approximately a year before the events we're discussing today, Gabriella's father, Miguel Castro, subjected Jassy to a violent attack when she expressed her desire to leave him. Despite her attempts to break free from the abusive relationship, Miguel refused to let her go, inflicting severe physical harm upon her. Ultimately, Jassy sought help from the authorities, leading to Miguel's conviction and a four-year prison sentence. Despite the trauma she endured, Jassy persevered, working as a waitress at the Boston restaurant Del Frisco. She found solace in her love for dance and photography, passions that brought joy to her life amidst the hardships she faced. Jassy cherished the moments spent with her family, friends, and especially her daughter, often delighting in visits to the park with her little girl. However, on the evening of Saturday, February 23rd, 2019, Jassy entrusted her two-year-old daughter to her family's care as she prepared to celebrate her birthday with friends. The celebration took place at Venue, a nightclub located in Boston's theater district on Warrington Street. Donning her new orange jumpsuit, Jassy embarked on what was meant to be a joyous evening. According to her friend, who later spoke to the police, Jassy spent the night dancing and indulging in champagne with her companions. As the nightclub closed its doors, Jassy found herself outside with two friends. Unfortunately, in the course of the night, they parted ways, leaving Jassy alone. It was the last time anyone saw her. Days passed without any communication from Jassy. Her phone remained switched off, with all calls directed to voicemail. Sunday came and went, followed by Monday, yet there was no sign of Jassy's whereabouts. Growing increasingly concerned, Jassy's father, Joaquin Correa, accompanied by a friend of hers, visited the police station on Tuesday, February 26th, to report his daughter's disappearance. In response, the police initiated an investigation into Jassy's disappearance, desperately seeking answers to unravel the mystery surrounding her sudden vanishing. The detectives prioritized uncovering Jassy's movements following her departure from the nightclub, her family and friends engaged in distributing informational flyers throughout the city, hoping to elicit valuable leads from the public. Meanwhile, detectives diligently interviewed Jassy's friends who had been with her on the night of her disappearance. Despite these efforts, little progress was made as her friends were unaware of her whereabouts after they bid her farewell outside the nightclub, believing she intended to return home. The investigative team turned to witness statements and surveillance footage obtained from cameras positioned in and around the nightclub and adjacent streets. One crucial piece of footage captured Jassy on the sidewalk along Tremont Street, adjacent to the nightclub, at 2.14 a.m. shortly after her departure. In the video, Jassy appeared to be intoxicated as she interacted with multiple individuals. Subsequently, the footage depicted Jassy entering an Uber that she had not ordered, mistakenly presuming it to be her ride. The situation took a troubling turn when the driver, evidently displeased by the misunderstanding, engaged in a confrontation with Jassy before forcibly ejecting her from the vehicle. The events that unfolded thereafter became a focal point of interest for the investigators, propelling their search for answers. Following her altercation with the Uber driver, Jassy continued arguing on the sidewalk. 
At that juncture, an unidentified man intervened, extending his hand towards her in an apparent attempt to assist. They moved aside, engaging in conversation, but it became evident that Jassy wished to depart, yet the man persisted in holding her hands. Subsequent analysis of CCTV footage revealed that Jassy departed the vicinity in the company of this man. Tragically, it was a pivotal moment where she fell prey to a predator, exploiting her vulnerable state. The subsequent footage depicted Jassy jumping onto the man's back as he carried her towards his vehicle. Fourteen minutes later, they departed in the car, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions for law enforcement. The police swiftly identified the man as 32-year-old Louis Coleman. Despite hailing from a reputable background and holding a master's degree in physics, there was no record of criminal activity associated with him. Interestingly, there was no vehicle registered under his name in police databases. However, it was discovered that his mother owned a red 2016 Buick, which matched the vehicle in which Coleman departed with Jassy. Coleman resided in Providence, Rhode Island, approximately 50 miles from the venue nightclub. Upon arriving at his residence, law enforcement found it vacant. Subsequent surveillance footage from the vicinity corroborated the ominous concerns of both the police and Jassy's distraught family. The journey from the venue nightclub to Coleman's apartment in Providence took approximately one hour, indicating that he made a stop along the way. He returned to his apartment around 4.15 a.m. on Sunday, roughly two hours after he had put Jassy in his car. The following day, Coleman sent an email to his colleagues, informing them that he would be absent for a few more days. Hi all, just giving everyone a heads up that I'm still out sick. I'll be back in a few days, Coleman wrote. The contents of the email suggest that he required time to cover up evidence of the crime. Over the next two days, Coleman likely attempted to conceal any traces of his involvement. Now, let's delve into additional CCTV footage shedding light on Jassy's whereabouts after her departure with Coleman. The initial recording was withheld by the police due to ethical considerations, but it depicted Coleman escorting Jassy to his apartment. FBI Special Agent Thomas Sukowskas provided insight into what transpired in this footage. Shortly thereafter, Coleman was observed exiting a red sedan and proceeding towards the building's entrance, carrying an individual with long hair and wearing orange pants. Zukowskis noted, I believe that this footage captures Coleman transporting the victim into his apartment complex. According to his analysis, footage from the lobby of the building revealed Coleman entering at approximately 4.27 a.m cradling a woman in his arms. Subsequently, he boarded the elevator and ascended to the sixth floor, where Jassy remained motionless. She appeared either unconscious or deceased at that time. On the very day Jassy's father reported her disappearance to the authorities, Tuesday, February 26th, Coleman was captured by surveillance cameras at Walmart. The items he purchased raised eyebrows among investigators. Receipts obtained by the police indicated his acquisition of three Tyvek suits, duct tape, two candles, electrical tape, a mask, surgical gloves, two pairs of safety goggles, a respirator, and the CLN release bleach bath. On February 27th, while concerned relatives and friends canvassed the area with flyers featuring Jassy's image, Coleman made another visit to Walmart. Surveillance footage captured at 9.22 p.m. depicted him pushing a cart containing notably characteristic items, a large suitcase and a canister. At approximately 9.58 p.m. on February 27, 2019, Coleman was recorded entering the apartment building with what appeared to be a new, sizable suitcase. Subsequent footage revealed his actions on February 28, 2019 at 2.15 a.m., as he maneuvered the suitcase out of his unit, through the building, and into the parking lot, eventually loading it into his vehicle. This footage speaks for itself, offering compelling insights. Notably, Coleman struggled to lift the suitcase into the trunk of his car. Between 2.44 a.m. and 4.02 a.m., 
Coleman purportedly made multiple trips from the building, transporting cardboard boxes, trash bags, a bottle of bleach, a computer tower, a black laptop case, and a small duffel bag. Jassy Correa has never left Coleman's apartment since the morning of February 24th, stated then U.S. Attorney for Massachusetts Andrew Lelling in a press briefing. Later that day, February 28th, 2019, law enforcement secured a search warrant for Coleman's residence, uncovering two packages of hooded coveralls and two respirator masks. Additionally, they scrutinized a sofa adorned with four large cushions, one of which lacked its cover. Outside the apartment complex, a dumpster yielded white trash bags, a bag containing plastic sheets, men's jeans stained with bleach, a belt, a white nylon hooded coverall, an unfilled box of baking soda, clear safety goggles, duct tape packaging, rubbing alcohol, Walmart bags, used plastic gloves, an empty package from a car air freshener, three used packages of purifying charcoal and a sponge. In the afternoon of February 28, 2019, authorities intercepted Coleman's car near Wilmington, Delaware. Upon ordering Coleman out of the vehicle, officers inquired about any potential passengers. According to some reports, Coleman purportedly responded, she's in the trunk. Subsequently, within the confines of Coleman's vehicle trunk, officers made a grim discovery. Jassy's lifeless body wrapped in a sofa cushion cover, encased within a black trash bag, all housed within a large suitcase, identical to the one Coleman had transported into his apartment on February 27, 2019. Upon inspection of the vehicle, experts noted cracks on the windshield, situated in two places on the passenger side. This evidence led law enforcement to suspect that the assault against Jassy occurred within the vehicle. Consequently, Coleman was promptly apprehended and transported to a Delaware State Police barracks. During his detainment, Coleman exhibited a sizable bandage on the right side of his face, allegedly attributing it to the victim. Forensic examination concluded that Jassy's cause of death was a result of strangulation and blunt force trauma. Furthermore, seminal fluid found on her body yielded DNA samples matching Coleman's. Prosecutors asserted that Coleman's DNA was also present under Jassy's fingernails. Despite extensive analysis, experts could not definitively pinpoint the exact location where Jassy met her demise. Her untimely death reverberated as a profound shock within her family, compounded by the heartbreaking reality that her two-year-old daughter had been deprived of her mother. Members of the Boston authorities extended their support to the Korea family, assuring them of their commitment to securing justice for Jassy. Unfortunately, as is common in such cases, certain individuals took to social media platforms to cast blame on Jassy for being alone on the streets late at night. Suffolk District Attorney Rachel Rollins addressed this issue, offering her perspective on the matter. Jassy was not in the wrong place at the right time. Uh, she was right where every woman has every right to be, celebrating her birthday on a night out with friends. Let's not fall into a discussion about whether we should walk home alone or how many people we should call when we're leaving the club. If anything, let's remind the men in our lives that violence against women isn't a woman's issue. It's a problem that men take responsibility for in their lives, in their sons' lives, and in the social lives with friends and colleagues. On the somber morning of Saturday, March 9, 2019, grieving family members and members of the community gathered at St. Peter's Parish in Dorchester to bid farewell to Jassy Correa. Among the mourners, some clad in all-white attire, while others adorned themselves with buttons, shirts, and sweatshirts bearing Jassy's visage alongside the rallying cry, Justice for Jassy. In her eulogy, Makila de Andrada, Jassy's cousin and closest confidant, expressed profound sorrow and acceptance of Jassy's untimely passing, stating, As a family, as friends, as a community, we express our sadness, but we must also accept the death of Jassy. We do not know, but God knows.
and I have faith and trust in God with all of my heart that her death was not in vain. Addressing the congregation, Boston Mayor Marty Walsh pledged to prioritize efforts to foster a safer environment for women, asserting, young women deserve to go out at night and celebrate their birthdays with their friends, and they deserve to come back home afterward to their children and their families. He emphasized that no family should endure the anguish experienced by Jassy's loved ones. In a heartfelt gesture, Joaquin Correa, Jassy's father, expressed gratitude to the gathering of over 200 individuals inside the church. Notably, it was revealed that Jassy's mother, who resided in Portugal and had been separated from her daughter for two decades, was also present at the service, underscoring the profound impact of Jassy's life and tragic demise on her family across continents. As the parents of the 23-year-old prepared to bid their final farewell, their faces etched with profound grief, the church overflowed with mourners. Not a single seat remained vacant, with many individuals lining the back wall to pay their respects. In his poignant address, Joaquin Correa expressed heartfelt gratitude to the city for its unwavering support as well as to the multitude of law enforcement agencies and departments across three states whose relentless efforts and dedication were instrumental in their noble yet perilous mission. Rest in paradise to my dear Jassy, he uttered, his voice laden with sorrow. Rest in peace, my dear child. Louis Coleman faced charges of kidnapping resulting in death a grave offense carrying the possibility of capital punishment or a life sentence. However, in November 2019, prosecutors announced their decision not to pursue the death penalty for Coleman. Throughout the trial, prosecutors presented a plethora of evidence, including surveillance footage capturing Coleman dragging Jassy Correa's body into his Providence apartment, as well as his online search history in the days following her disappearance. FBI agents detailed Coleman's internet searches, which included inquiries such as, can a person fit in a suitcase? And how to pull out a tooth that is not loose. However, Coleman's defense team argued that this evidence was largely irrelevant to the kidnapping charge against him. Attorney David Hoos asserted, it is not a case about whether he handled himself properly after her death whether he did things that were illegal, inappropriate after that. And that, frankly, has been where the bulk of the government's evidence has laid. I would suggest that none of these things are determinant of the elements of the kidnapping allegation. Multiple motions filed by both the prosecution and defense meticulously detailed the events surrounding Jassy Correa's disappearance and the days leading up to the discovery of her lifeless body. While the two sides presented contrasting narratives, the documents revealed chilling accounts of the unfolding events and the circumstances culminating in Jassy's tragic demise. Prosecutors established Coleman's presence at the same nightclub as Jassy and her friends on the fateful night. Inside the club, Coleman engaged in conversation with a woman he had just met, distinct from Jassy. They conversed, danced, and even exchanged phone numbers. Subsequently, they continued to communicate via text messages both during and after the club's closure. The prosecution contended that Jassy was not the aggressor in the altercation and asserted that Coleman perpetrated her death after deceiving her into believing he would provide her with a ride to her friend's apartment. Conversely, Coleman's defense team posited an alternative narrative, suggesting that Jassy acted aggressively following an altercation with an Uber driver who ejected her from the vehicle. During the trial, defense attorneys sought to portray Jassy as the instigator of the confrontation, framing the crime as a spontaneous altercation rather than a premeditated act of stalking, kidnapping, and homicide. Prosecutors rebutted these claims, asserting that the defendant's argument essentially implied that the victim who weighed 119 pounds at the time of the autopsy, assaulted the defendant, who weighed 200 pounds at the time of his arrest. Coleman's legal team endeavored to minimize their client's culpability in the crime, citing the presence of various prohibited substances in Jassy's body, 
revealed through toxicological examination alongside alcohol. However, despite their efforts in June 2022, Coleman was found guilty on one count of kidnapping, resulting in death. Subsequently, the defense filed a motion challenging the sufficiency of the evidence to support the conviction. Despite their efforts, the outcome remained unchanged. In October 2022, the court handed down a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole for 36-year-old Lewis Coleman, holding him accountable for the kidnapping and demise of Jassy Correa. Additionally, the court mandated Coleman to provide approximately $60,000 in restitution to Jassy's grieving family. Jassy, a vibrant and cherished 22-year-old mother to a toddler daughter, fell victim to the heinous actions of Coleman, a stranger who abducted, assaulted, and ultimately strangled her to death. In a statement, First Assistant United States Attorney Joshua Levy underscored the enduring anguish inflicted by Coleman's depravity upon Jassy's family and loved ones, emphasizing that his callous actions forfeited any right to freedom within society. Despite the severity of his actions, Coleman has exhibited no remorse to date, compounding the enduring pain and suffering endured by Jassy's family since the tragic events of February 24, 2019. After he lured 22-year-old Miss Korea into his car, sexually assaulted her, and violently killed her, Lewis Coleman did not once consider turning himself in. Rather, he concocted a gruesome plan to conceal the assault and murder he just committed. Today's sentence of life in prison is a just punishment, Levy said in a statement. It remains unclear where Lewis Coleman was taking Jassy's body and what he was going to do with it. Thank you for watching True Crime Inspector. Make sure to leave your thoughts in the comments section and subscribe to the channel for more disturbing true crime stories.